In this episode of Financial Model Detective, I want to talk to you about the minimum cash balance in a project finance transaction. So in this video first, I'm going to talk about what is the minimum cash balance and why it is needed in a project finance transaction. Then I'm going to talk to you about how to size the minimum cash balance and whether it can be pre-funded or funded from cash from operation. And lastly, we're gonna go into a financial model and I'm gonna show you how to model the minimum cash balance into your project finance models. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, what is minimum cash balance and why do we need it? I think this is a very tiny subject when it comes to you know structuring deals and transactions. However, it's a reality that you need to incorporate into your financial models and into your projection. And it's basically a contingency for operation phase of your project. It's the cash buffer for when things go sideways for your project. So when you're distributing your dividends, you don't distribute the whole thing especially during the first years, you're going to put some money aside in case things go wrong, you can tap into it. Okay, so that's basically what a minimum cash balance is. And it's needed because, you know, there are always unexpected things that happen. We have our base case, which represents our best estimates of what we expect in the future. However, you always need to incorporate different kind of contingency in your projections. So for example, you have a, another layer of contingency is like putting some contingency in your OPEX, in your operating expenditure. And the cash balance is also another layer of contingency that you incorporate in your financial models, okay? So now the next question is, okay, so you're telling me that I need to put some money aside in case things go wrong, but by how much? Okay, the, the, the question of sizing the minimum cash balance, there are different ways that you can do it. These are the ways that I have seen that and I have incorporated in my project finance models. Method one is that you size your minimum cash balance based on X months of operating expenditure. So you look at what you need to pay each year to your uh, contractors, the salaries that you need to pay, you know, all the expenses that you have on yearly basis. And you're gonna take maybe two months, three months, depending on, you know, the riskiness of the project. You're gonna take a percentage of your OPEX or a number of months of OPEX. And you're gonna say, I'm gonna make sure that this is in a reserve account and I'm not gonna to touch it in case things go wrong, okay? So that's one way. Another way is a percentage of revenues as well. You can have like, I don't know, 2%, 5% of your revenues in a reserve account for the minimum cash balance. And lastly, you can have a fixed amount. Okay, so I don't know from where, but maybe it's a, your technical advisors or like your financial advisors are gonna tell you, you know, I think that 200K, 200,000, dollars per year is okay for a minimum cash balance. So these are the three ways that I usually have seen and I incorporate in my financial models for sizing the minimum cash balance. So the next question that you might ask me is that, okay, so Hedia, is the minimum cash balance a fixed amount or can it change, you know, throughout the years? It can change, for example, if you base it in method one and in method two, meaning that uh, it is a percentage of your operating expenditure. If the operating expenditure changes, the minimum cash balance also changes accordingly. The same thing with the revenues. If your revenues are like have seasonality in it, then you know the minimum cash balance can also change based on that. If you base it on method three, which is a fixed amount, it can be like stable and fixed throughout the years. However, I would still recommend to put maybe uh, an inflation and escalation into this minimum cash balance, but it's all depending on you and the specific 
need of your own project. The other question that I want to answer here is that, okay, so you're telling me that you need to fund and you need to keep this money into your cash accounts. Okay. So how am I going to fund it? Okay. So what I have seen the most common uh, way that I have seen that this is funded, you know, during the operation in the first year, in the first semester, you know, in your first operational semester or year, you know, you're going to fund this money and you're going to keep it in the reserve account. So it is funded from cash from operation. This is the common way that I have seen. However, you might want to argue that it might be, you know, beneficial for a project to, to have this uh, minimum cash balance pre-funded as part of the construction budget and funded with debt and equity. The same thing as working capital. We know that, you know, pre-funding of working capital is one of the items that we see in the sources and uses of funds. The same thing that you can do with this minimum cash balance as well and to include it in the budget and fund it with debt and equity. And if it is pre-funded, normally the same as pre-funding of working capital, it is funded in the last days or months of construction. You don't need to put this money in a reserve account since day one, and then it's going to accumulate interest. So it's better to fund it towards the end of the construction so that you can just, you know, uh, get ready for your operation and have this money in your cash account for unexpected events. Okay, now let's get into the modeling. I'm going to open a financial model and I'm going to show you how I would model minimum cash balance in my project finance models. Okay, so let's start with the input sheet. So I have in my uh, input sheet, I have a section that I call minimum cash balance. And as you can see here, I have included the three methods that I mentioned for sizing the minimum cash balance here. So I have Method number one, which is a percentage of OPEX. So I say 17% of OPEX, you just put it as minimum cash balance. Method number two is a percentage of revenue. Here I included 8% of revenues as an option to size the minimum cash balance. And the last one is the fixed one. So I say 200K is the minimum cash balance that I want to see in my cash reserve account. Okay. And then I have a switch here, which enables me to switch in between these three methods. Okay. So if the switch is three, meaning that this one is selected is this, if the switch is set to one, it means that the OPEX method is selected. And uh, the next thing that I included in my inputs is the question of pre-funding of the minimum cash balance. So I included a switch and I'm asking the user, do you want the minimum cash balance to be pre-funded? If the switch is no, this means that if you look at your sources and uses of funds in my dashboard, you see that the pre-funding of minimum cash balance is zero. So meaning that this is funded from cash from operation. If, however, I put the switch to true, this means that if I look at my uh, pre-funding of minimum cash balance in my sources and uses of fund, it is included and it is funded with my financing instruments. And of course, the question also is how much do you want it to be pre-funded? You can also have a case where you have uh, a partial pre-funding of your minimum cash account. So for example, you say like, I'm going to put 200K as a pre-funding. However, I want like 400 to be included in the cash reserve account. So 50% of it is pre-funded. Another 50% will be funded from cash from operation. So it can be relative. The other thing that I think is useful to have is that for how long do you want this reserve account to be maintained? This is a question that you need to ask in each and every reserve account that you're going to build into your project finance models. So most of the time, this minimum um, cash account needs to be maintained throughout the life of the project. However, if it is just a lender's requirements, 
then you might want to just maybe put it as you know by the end of the life of your debt you might want to just release whatever you have in this account as dividends and no longer maintain it however for any rational investor it is preferable to have this cash buffer built into their projections and kept in their reserve accounts Okay, so these are all the inputs that I would include in my project finance models. So now let's go and look at a calculation sheet and see what are the steps to build it in a, a financial model. Okay, so you see that here I included the minimum cash balance when I'm calculating my dividends because basically if the minimum cash balance is funded from cash from operation it's going to be funded from uh, cash flow available for equity so you look at whatever cash is available to this to be distributed you know as dividends or as shareholder loan proceeds and then you're going to first deduct the minimum cash balance and then you know distribute your cash and that's how you need to build it so the step one however is to find out how much you want to keep in this reserve account in each model period so remember we said we have these three models that i built in my um, input sheet so i need to first of all build the percentage opex method build the percentage revenue method build the fixed method let me maybe make it bigger and then once i have these three methods built in i have a line for each of them and so now it's time to use the switch and pick up one of these three methods. So for example, my switch now is set to one. So I am using a simple choose function and it's gonna basically pick up the percentage of operating expenditure as a way to size the minimum cash balance. Once you have that, so now the, the next thing to do is to basically come to your, uh, when you are calculating your maximum um, dividend from cash perspective, not from accounting perspective, from cash perspective, you just take the revenue line in your cash flow waterfall, which is cash flow available for equity, and maybe also the return cash balance, you know, the beginning balance of your return cash. And then you're going to deduct this target minimum cash balance and that's how much is going to be available for distribution okay so that's basically it and then you also need an account in, um, you also need a corkscrew account just to balance your balance sheet okay so that's also another step and that's only if you want to allow the pre-funding of this minimum cash balance if you don't want to pre-fund it and you don't want to even give the option of pre-funding then you don't need to include this next step however for the other steps you know are required in order to build the minimum cash balance into your model so now when i come to my cash flow statements you see here i am in my cash flow waterfall or in my cash flow statement you see that you know when it comes to the uh, uh, retain ending balance of my returned cash meaning that the, how much cash is remaining at the end of each model period you see that it is not zero why because i am not allowing all the cash to be distributed i always keep a cash buffer in my project so as you can see here this is going all the way you know throughout the project life okay and depending on how i want to size it see for example if i put the switch to to three let's say the fixed one then if i come back to my cash flow statement you see that the amount that is pre-funded uh, sorry, the amount that is kept in the account in each model period remains at 200k. Okay, now once you know all this, you see that you know building it is quite easy and it's kind of like an easy concept to also understand. Let's do some sensitivities because I believe that financial models are all about sensitivities or scenario analysis and that's going to help us to have a better understanding of concepts. So I have already done it for you. So 
This is a case, the first one that you see is that I don't have any minimum cash balance requirement, okay? So meaning that, you know, if I come and show you in the model, I'm going to put my switch to three, I'm going to put it to zero, and this prefunding is going to be also zero, okay? So as you can see here, there is no prefunding of this minimum cash balance. And if I come and mean my cash flow statement, all the cash is distributed and there is nothing left in my cash account after I distribute my dividends. OK, so that's case one. As you can see here, if that's the case in, in this project, my IRR, my equity return is 16 percent. OK, if, however, I say that, no, I want to keep a minimum of 200 K fixed in my cash account in my project account cash account and i just want to keep it throughout okay and not distribute it until the end of the, the life of my project so in terms of the equity return the impact is 0.1 percent so i am going down from 16 to 15.9 percent okay then what if, you know, I just think that the project is risky and maybe I, I don't have much confidence about my base case. So I want to keep like 900K in this project, which is sizable compared to my annual revenue. Let's look at my uh, revenues. It's, uh, you see, it's around like 6 million. So I have, I'm including like 5, uh, 1 million almost every year in uh, in this cash balance and i'm not distributing so in that case you see that the impact on my equity return is higher i'm going from 16 percent to 15.6 percent okay now let's see what if these are my requirement i need to have a minimum cash balance however i'm gonna pre-fund it in the construction budget and the lenders agree to include this cost in the budget and fund it with together with debt and equity if the sizing is 200k then the impact of putting it in the budget and then releasing it one year sorry not release yes releasing it in the project account and keep it that's the meaning of pre-funding is going to bring me back to my 16 percent so it's not it's going to have no impact on the return it's just going to be a cash that is funded by debt and equity and then it is kept throughout the life of a project OK. And um, however, if it is sizable, the requirements of keeping the minimum cash balance is quite sizable compared to my cash flow, then you will see that, you know, pre-funding might be a good solution because the impact on my return is going to be from 16 percent to 15.8 percent. So that can be an argument that you can go to your lenders and say, if that's how much you want me to keep in my account and not to distribute it, I suggest that we, we put it in the construction budget and fund it with debt and equity and it's going to hurt me less in terms of my return. OK, so these are just the things that you can discuss and you can experiment with, even with like topics, you know, small topics like, you know, minimum cash balance that you might not really pay attention and just build it like this in your model. It's always good to, you know, go and think about it and see different ways of structuring it and also even building it into your project finance models. So I hope you like this video. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have ideas about other topics that you want me to discuss here and share with you. And I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you and bye. If you want to learn how to build better financial models, check out my online course on financial model spreadsheet design at courses.phoenixmode.com.